ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. Restaurants taking their chances. Businesses band together in defiance of the latest shutdown, fearing the worst if they don't reopen right now. And still waiting, what's holding up FDA approval as vaccines are ready to ship out? Plus, stretched thin and maxed out. Palomar health workers say they've reached a breaking point. But first, we have breaking news just coming in less than an hour ago. The Supreme Court rejected a lawsuit from the Texas Attorney General and signed on by many other attorneys general, which sought to overturn Joe Biden's election victory, a fatal blow to President Trump and his allies in their quest to overturn the results. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And the lawsuit wanted to block the ballots of millions of voters in battleground states that went in favor of President-elect Joe Biden. The effort was backed by President Trump and more than 100 Republican congressmen wrote a legal briefing in support of it. Courts have already dismissed dozens of other lawsuits and appeals by the Trump campaign. Attorney General Bill Barr has said the Department of Justice has not yet seen any evidence of widespread voter fraud. It's time, unfortunately, we have to stand up for ourselves. Some restaurant owners in Carlsbad say that they're starting right now. The businesses fearing the worst under the shutdown order say they have no choice. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala shows us, many are reopening their outdoor patios and community members are out to support them. The owner of Oak and Elixir has already taken so many reservations tonight. She expects approximately 100 people to dine here at her patio. She says this is not about defiance, it's about surviving. We have to open up, otherwise we risk the losing our business entirely. Annie Rammel owns Oak and Elixir in Carlsbad. She spent $7,000 to have this deck built, providing outdoor dining for patrons. It was going well until she had to shut things down once again this week as coronavirus cases surged and restrictions on in-person dining were put back in place. Closed, open, closed, open. A lot of us are not doing well. We're not doing well. Uh, the takeout and to go is, is not, we're losing money on that. Annie and a group of small business owners in Carlsbad and Oceanside decided they will reopen for in-person dining and take their chances. She says if she doesn't do this, her 15 employees would be laid off during an already rough year. It's for our employees to put food on their tables. Some of them have children that they need to be able to provide for. Um, and the holidays are coming and it's like, I'm not going to do that to my employees. I'm just not going to. Her patio will be open starting Friday evening and just next door at Caldo Pomodoro. Customers were seated outside for lunch. So we're basically fighting for our lives and we've we've been here for 29 years. Um, it's a family owned and operated restaurant the entire time. They're great people. Um, it's not that we're doing anything wrong. It's just we want to survive. Carlsbad police say they're responding to reports of businesses operating outside of the health orders, but the goal is to gain compliance through education. But willful violations witnessed by officers are reported to the county for documentation. We're scared to lose our ABC license, which is our liquor license. If that happens, the group of us is saying we're going to push through. Um, we have some attorneys on our side and they say we have a really good fight here because there is no evidence that these uh, spikes are coming from us. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Carlsbad police officers are also handing out flyers to business owners that explain the latest public health order. And the latest stay at home order was triggered by shrinking ICU capacity, which is now down to 6.2% in Southern California as a whole. Yesterday it was 7.7%. San Diego is grouped in with 10 other counties that often share resources and patients when hospitals become overwhelmed. And we're still waiting for final approval from the FDA before vaccines can ship out. The Food and Drug Administration voted yesterday to recommend emergency use of the Pfizer vaccine, but it must be authorized in order to move forward. And this morning on Good Morning America, the Health and Human Services Secretary said all that's left to do is work out the exact language on the fact sheets and doctors will able to go move forward today. The White House Chief of Staff reportedly threatened the FDA commissioner with his job if authorization is not granted by the end of the day. Even with some of the unknowns about Pfizer's vaccine, an independent committee has decided that the potential benefits outweigh the risks 
for granting emergency use. Government advisors voted 17 to 4 in favor of the vaccine being used in people ages 16 and older. The shot still considered experimental because that final stage of the study isn't finished. There are some questions that can't be answered yet, like can it stop asymptomatic spread that accounts for roughly half of all virus cases? We're not sure at this point that the vaccine protects you against getting infected. We know for sure it's very, very good, 94, 95% in protecting you against clinically recognizable disease and almost 100% in protecting you for severe disease. Dr. Anthony Fauci says we will need the public on board with getting the shot to achieve herd immunity. He predicts that could happen before the fall of next year. He hopes people are gaining confidence by just paying attention to the process. The reason I think this is so important is that we want to make sure that we impress the American public that decisions that involve their health and safety are made outside of the realm of politics, outside of the realm of self-aggrandizement. Now on the safety front, the first people vaccinated will be closely followed for any side effects. At this point, why two British people with a history of severe allergies experience side effects from Pfizer's vaccine is still a mystery, but both have recovered. There are no egg products or preservatives in the COVID vaccine, which have triggered past vaccine reactions. Vaccines will start shipping at the busiest time of the year for delivering orders. Both UPS and FedEx will transport vaccines, and both say the vaccine will take priority and will be tracked. They are also working with the FAA to make sure that planes carrying the equipment are first in line to land and take off. The U.S. government is doubling its order of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for a total of 200 million doses. Research shows both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are about 95 percent effective. Moderna's doesn't have to stay quite as cold during shipping and storage. Healthcare workers at Palomar Health say they've had enough. And today they're demanding more staffing support as the number of COVID patients increases. They told ABC 10 News reporter Cassie Carlisle they feel overworked while they still don't have enough PPE. Nurses say they're stretched thin and maxed out caring for our community during the pandemic. And they say Palomar Health administrators applied for a waiver with the state asking to increase patient ratios. And that, nurses said, was their breaking point. Friday morning, caregivers held red signs reading save lives, safe staffing now. Palmer claims that they're, they took a hit due to the pandemic, but it's the nurses and caregivers who are taking the hit in the form of increased patient loads, unsafe staffing levels, and inadequate PPE. Palomar Health sent ABC 10 News this statement stating they received a waiver from the California Department of Public Health Wednesday that would allow Palomar to, quote, assign one ICU nurse to care for up to three patients depending on patient acuity. The waiver, which only applies to one 12-bed unit, which has both intensive and intermediate care patients located in the same area, has not been implemented and is only in preparation for a potential patient surge or reduction in workforce due to sickness, end quote. Nurses say safe levels by law are one nurse to two patients. Nurses accuse the hospital of commingling COVID and non-COVID patients. Palomar said that that is completely false and appalling. Reporting from home, Cassie Carlisle, ABC 10 News. Palomar also said in their statement they always meet or exceed PPE requirements. And city officials are dealing with an outbreak at the convention center. 120 COVID cases were reported there yesterday, according to the Union Tribune. That's compared to 27 cases about a week ago. The convention center has been a shelter for homeless San Diegans, both as a step toward permanent housing and a way to allow for social distancing to prevent the spread of the virus. The county says those who tested positive have been isolated. The search for a drive-by shooter happening right now in Scripps Ranch. Sky 10 shows police surrounding an apartment trying to get the suspect to come out. Officers say the person opened fire on a vehicle driving down Scripps Westview Parkway. It happened around 2.30 this afternoon. The victim said he knew the shooter and sent police to the person's home. And that's where the search is now unfolding. We will stay on top of this. We'll bring you updates as they come in.